Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna look at what these numbers do on the top of your keyboard and which functions they control in the Harrison Mixbus 32C. So there's a lot of different functions that are available in Harrison Mixbus. And for most of those functions, you have a quick key or a shortcut that you can use to get to those functions quickly without having to use your mouse every single time. So what I'm gonna look at is the top of my keyboard right here. We have numbers one, through zero, and we're gonna see which functions they align with, and that should help us to streamline our workflow. So if you look at number one right here, we can see it changes the slide, ripple, and lock modes. And this is gonna be your edit mode. So what that means is, so if I look at this region right here and I have it locked, that means I can't move anything, okay? If I press one again, it's gonna put it in slide mode. I can slide those back and forth. And then if I press it one more time, it's gonna put it in ripple mode. And this is simply gonna mean if I try to delete something and hit delete, then it's gonna slide everything from the right of that edit point over and just close in the gaps. So that's kind of cool. And I use ripple mode a lot when I'm editing maybe like a podcast or working with voiceover. And I just need to close out the gaps, but I don't wanna have to highlight everything and slide things over. So that's an easy way of doing that. And this does work in multiple groups. So let's just say I have these tracks in a group and it doesn't matter where I have it named right now. But if I select something and then I'm still in ripple mode, so I'm gonna hit delete. It's gonna slide everything over that's in that group. So this is great for drums, is great for stereo acoustic guitar tracks or anything that you need grouped together and that you wanna edit all at the same time. Okay, now number two is gonna deal with mouse or playhead. This is gonna be your actual edit point. So let's highlight this region and press Z. It's gonna make everything nice and big. And let's just say, for instance, I wanna split the track. So I'm gonna hold my mouse down and hit S. And now it split that track right where I had my mouse. So I could go here and hit S, over here, S, over here, S, and so forth. So now I have all these regions that I can work with. Now, if I change this, if I hit two again, and I change this to playhead, now, if I put my mouse right here, it's not gonna do anything because I have to move the playhead where I want the edit and then select the region and hit S. So now you can see that it split the region where the playhead was. So I can move the region over here. I can select the track, move the playhead, hit S. Now I have two different splits. Now, number three is gonna be the smart tool. So smart mode, add range functions to grab mode. So if I hit three, it's gonna turn smart mode on and off. So with it off, see I can go into range mode and I can go that. So I can, I can select range and I can make as many ranges as I want. But if I have it in smart mode and I hit G, see now G is my grab tool, R is my range, C is my cut, D is my draw. So the smart tool is gonna to allow me to have all the features that I mainly use all the time. And if I need to select something else, then I can always just use the shortcuts right here, whether it's S, D, F, or so forth. Now, number four is something I use all the time, and that is the snap on and off. A lot of times when you're working to a grid, you wanna be able to select a region right to the grid, and then you can cut that and you can do different things with it. Or if you had this snap off, you're more able to really dive in to find points where exactly we're gonna stop, especially if it's not right on the grid. So I can cut this and move it freely regardless of what the grid is set to. All right, now five is gonna change the grid and six is gonna do the same thing. So five kind of goes up and six goes down. So if I'm on no grid, I can go through the shortest subdivision, and then 64th, 32nd, 16th, eighth, quarter, bar. Or I can go back down, quarter, eighth, 16th, 32nd, 64th, 128th, and then I'm back to no grid. So that's what five and six does. Seven is going to give you your auto return on and off. So if I play the session for a second, Now I stop, the auto return is going to have the playhead come back to the same point where I started to play it. But if I hit seven again and I play it this time, I hit stop, it's gonna stop exactly where I hit stop and not return back to the previous point. All right, eight 
is going to allow your punch in and outs to be set right away and not have to use your mouse to hit one or the other. So eight turns those on and off, which is great. Now nine and zero is something that if you want to figure out what a tempo of a certain region or maybe a section of the song, or maybe you had a performance that wasn't played to a click and you want to adjust the tempo accordingly as the song progresses, this is a way you can do that. So let me press four and turn the snap on. And I did record this to 75 beats a minute. But let's just say, for example, that if I make a selection here from 21 to 22 and I hit nine, it's not really going to do anything because it's already the correct tempo. But let's just say, for example, I go from here to here and I hit S, then I hit nine. It's going to ask me, do you want to set the global tempo or add a new tempo marker? And I'm like, yeah, we can do that or we can set the global tempo. So if I do that, it's going to set it to 300 BPM, which is not really correct. But based on this small region right here, that's what the tempo would be at, I guess. So that's kind of cool. And another thing we can do, select a region and hit zero. And now it's going to set the global tempo or add a new tempo marker. Let's go ahead and add a new marker. And now it's changed from this marker right here to 150 BPM based off of this range selection right here. So this would be something we can dive into on a later video. Maybe I'll get my acoustic guitar and just play at random tempos and we can practice selecting different tempos based off of the range or a region that we select, okay? So I hope this was helpful. And be sure to subscribe down below and click that bell so you'll be notified every time I release new videos just like this. Thanks guys for watching. I am Dr. McFarland. I will see you in the next video. Keep rocking.